So far, our recursion uh, methods have been just voids. So now we're going to look at a recursive method that returns a value instead of void or nothing. And we're going to use the factorial. And I got factorial here open on Wikipedia. It's probably uh, a, better, it's a better explanation, I think, maybe than what you see here in the textbook. But what factorial is, zero is sort of weird. Don't worry about why the factorial of zero is one. But basically what factorial is, is the number, the whole number multiplied by each whole number smaller than that number down to one. So the first one it really makes sense for is two. So two times one is two. Three times two times one is six. Four factorial is four times three times two times one, which is 24. Five factorial, it's actually displayed right here. They won't let me highlight it, but it's in this example. Five factorial is five times four times three times two times one, which is 120. And the thing you should notice is to compute six factorial, I could multiply six times five times four times three times two times one, or I could take what I got for five factorial and multiply it by six. And that is what the book is showing right here. N factorial is N times the factorial of the number below it. And these right here, you should be able to see which is the base case and which is the recursive case. So the base case, zero factorial is one, that'll be our base case, and n factorial is n times n minus one factorial. All right, let's go ahead and write this method. Now, I could just copy and paste from the book, but let's not do that. Public static, this is gonna be an int because it's gonna return an integer. I'm gonna just call it fact because I don't feel like spelling it out all the way. Fact, it's gonna take an integer, we'll call it n, we're going to call fact. Let's go ahead and we're going to test the base case first. I'm just going to go if uh, n is 0 return, we're going to return a 1. Remember, factorial of 0 is 1. Now, what do we do else? Let's, uh, let's return negative 1. Uh, we haven't actually... We're only going to use the base case right here for now. Uh, what's the problem? Parenthesis, there we go. Now everybody's happy. Okay, let's run it. Uh-oh, we got no output. That's because factorial doesn't print. It returns an integer. So what we're going to do is we're going to sout this. Uh, let's go... I'm going to use i as a placeholder, plus i, plus close parenthesis, plus fact i. Okay, so instead of calling fact zero, I'm just going to use the variable i right here so that we could print out i and then print out the result of factorial. Factorial of zero is one. Fantastic. All right. So all that did, technically that's not using recursion because if you look inside this method, we'd never call the method fact inside. So we're not actually using recursion yet. We're just making sure the base case works. Let's go ahead and think about what happens when n is bigger than one. And that's in the book right here, n factorial, it's n times the factorial of n minus one. Now in mathematics, you put the factorial at the end, but of course in Java and almost every language, you don't write the method at the end of the input, you write the method at the beginning of the input. So we're not gonna return negative one, we're gonna return n times. Now I can't, I could, I could type whatever I want, so I'll go ahead and type this, but NetBeans is gonna yell at me because it doesn't know what the heck the exclamation point means, at least not in this context but we're gonna go fact n minus one. All right, and of course if I run it, I should get the same output as before because we're not actually, our n is zero, so we're not actually using this. This code's never getting executed down here. So now let's turn i into one, hit 
play. So factorial of one is one. And I'm gonna to go to the Wikipedia, make sure that we're correct. Factorial of one is indeed one, so that's good. Factorial of two should be two. Uh, now, I don't wanna keep editing this one by one by one. So we'll go four int i equals zero, i less than, it's tempting to put a large number in here. Let's just go, uh, let's see how big this chart gets here. Okay, that chart gets really big. Uh, we'll go up until where they skip values. I'll go to 20. Actually, I'm just gonna go to 10. You'll see what'll happen later when we start having big numbers. I'm gonna increase I by one and then curly brace, alt shift to bring that up. And now it's complaining because I declared I twice. So we'll just declare it once. All right, so we'll go ahead and run this. There we go, factorial of zero is one, factorial of one is one, factorial of two is two, factorial of three, remember that's three times two times one, which is six. Then six times four is 24, 24 times five is 120, and this will match the chart back in Wikipedia with all those values. And you should notice this number's getting big quickly. So let's go ahead and go to 20 and see what happens. All right, here we go. Something crazy happened. So it looks like everything is good for a little while. So factorial of 15 is whatever that number is. The last one highlighted, let's go check out 15 factorial. All right, it's wrong. Is 14 factorial right? 14 factorial is wrong, which is the last one that's right. Do we even get 11 right? All right, 11 is correct. I'll make that bigger so we can see, read the chart much nicer. 39, 916, 800. All right, so it got 11 right, got 12 right, 13, however, is wrong. So what in the world's happening? Well, there is a limit to how big integers can be. They are 32 bits, they're stored in binary. We'll cover binary a little bit uh, later in this chapter, but you run out of space very quickly. So if you're gonna use large numbers, larger than uh, a couple million, you don't want to use integers anymore. So that's why things start to go crazy. And then eventually you get negative values. Uh, and then you get some weird positive values again. So there are limits to how big an integer can get. And that's where things start to get messed up down here. Uh, that's out of the scope of this lecture. So I'm just going to stop it at 13. I think we might be able to go to 14, but I'll stop it at 13 or maybe even just 10. So that we actually have the right values displayed. Uh, you can use floats, but probably a better uh, type would be a double. A double will get you far more, will let you progress far more uh, into far more larger values down here. Actually, let's just do it. We'll go float, change all these ints to floats. So we better return. Oh, and I said double, but I type float. So I'm changing double, double. All right, double. I think that should work. And if you really want, you can do 0, 0.0, but it'll it'll work either way. And now we'll go i is less than 20, 0, 0.0, hit play. All right, you see some weird notation happening here. What is this e stuff? So factorial of 10 should be right, 10, three, six, yep, so 10's right. All right, something weird is happening after, let's see, a factorial of 11. So if you look, there's a decimal place, it's three point, I'll highlight it, 3.991, e to the seventh. So that e to the seventh is scientific notation, and this table here on Wikipedia doesn't use scientific notation until you get down here. So if we did factorial of 25, let's go to 26 so that we can actually see the 25 right here. That's factorial of 25. You'll notice that the two highlighted numbers should be the same. There we go. 
that e to the 25 means times 10 to the 25th power. And mathematically, it means you move the decimal place to the right 25 times, which means you're going to have a lot of extra zeros. You do lose precision. Again, something I'm not going to worry about right here. But for most purposes, this double is close enough. Now, there are still limitations. You can't make a double as big as you want. So there are limitations. You can look up the limitations on doubles, but that will get you out of... It'll get you into larger values, but there are limitations on how big doubles can get. There are arbitrary precision integers, but I don't want to worry about that right here. So this is factorial. Let's go back to just 10. And I'm going to add, we already have a breakpoint here. Breakpoint. There we go. So that's just a regular breakpoint. Um, and I can run it with that on. So we're in a debug mode. And you can see if I just keep hitting F8, you can see that the value was 0 of n. We call it values 1. And we, hit, we call it factorial again, so it's going to go back and use 0. And now we're back here. And now we step into one more time, and now n is 1. So I'll just run that a couple times. I want to skip to where n is 2. I'm just looking at the value. OK, so now n is 3. So this is an interesting case. Uh, so when n is 3, it's not 0, so it won't return 1. So it'll come down here, it'll return 3 times factorial of 2. So now n is 2, and it's going to compute factorial of 2, etc., etc. And I'll just let it finish off and get all the way through the factorial of 9. So you can use the debug here as well. Make sure that you stop, though. If you're in debug mode, make sure that you either run it to completion... Uh, or hit stop, one of the two, and you can hit that play button to finish it. I don't know why. Sometimes you do need to look down here and make sure I see that it is running. I'm going to hit the stop button and then yes to stop it. So just be careful. When you, when you run in debug mode, you do need to make sure the execution is actually finished before you start editing or doing something else. So don't let it just sit there running forever. It'll take up some memory and it may act, make, make it act a little bit strange.